Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And just a couple things I need to announce. First of all, fall semester starts uh, next week. Really is time to enroll. I want to remind everybody about the Diet and Lifestyle Intervention Program, which is available to both um, uh, health professionals and lay people. It's a 15 module course. There's no homework during the 15 modules, just a final project at the end. Lay people can um, just audit it if they want. They don't even have to do the final project, but um, it covers women's health, children's health, men's health, cancer, autoimmune diseases, heart disease, Alzheimer's and cognitive disorders and diabetes and mental health and musculoskeletal health. I mean, a whole repertoire of topics, a huge amount of information. And uh, that starts next Wednesday. We're also going to uh, offer the Food Over Medicine license program again uh, this fall. And I'm doing a free session, a free preview session of that. That's coming up. Let me see here. Wednesday, September 7th at 830. So if you would like to check some of this out, let me know. And if you're interested in careers, I mean, I set aside time regularly to spend with people who are interested in professional development, whether you have had any prior training or not. So some of you always want to be in healthcare and you just need to know how to get started. And there are some things we can show you to do. Some of you are in healthcare and you want to take your career in a different direction, maybe go into independent practice, do the kind of work that I'm doing. So send me an email, pampopper at msn.com, and I'm happy to talk to you. And then remember, if you're a member of Wellness Forum and you haven't attended one of our orientation sessions, we'll take you through and show you how to get into our various websites. You get a ton of stuff when you're a member, access to video libraries and article libraries and um, live classes and all kinds of goodies. And we pay you to learn as well. How about that, right? Okay, so today I want to talk about weight loss, the thing that nobody can do, all right? So it's difficult. It's time that we just admit it. And I was inspired to make this video after I read an article posted on Med Medscape that was titled, Stop Pretending There's a Magic Formula to Weight Loss. It was written by a physician named Yanni Friedhoff. And I think the article deserves some attention because it represents conventional medical thinking about obesity, which is part of the problem. And it actually starts, I mean, I agree with Friedhoff on some things. I think he's spot on. But then what he recommends for people to do is just ridiculous. So anyway, he starts with a statement that I've been making about weight loss plans and diets. They all work for the first 12 weeks and the problem that almost none of them work in the long term. Friedhoff writes, quote, truly the world's most backwards, upside down, anti-science, nonsensical diets work over the short haul, fueled by the fact that short-term suffering for weight loss is a skill set that humanity has assiduously cultivated for at least the past hundred years. We're really good at it. He then asks the question, since everybody knows this, everybody knows almost anything works for 12 weeks, why are medical journals still publishing 12-week studies of weight loss plans? He says, you know, does anybody really think that after 100 years of trying that there's some strategy out there that's remain unknown? It's a secret until now that will show long-term reproducible weight loss. Why do we continue to pretend that there's something new that's going to come to light that's going to make this all go away? And I think these are good questions to ask. Even more, it's important to find the answers. So, Freidhoff uses an example of the ridiculousness, right? This is a study that was published last month in Obesity. It reflects the results of a 12-week online automated weight loss program that's a whole lot like many others. Participants were given weekly lessons that explained revolutionary concepts such as that high calorie foods are high in calories and people should eat less of them. Wow, I'm sure nobody knew that. Dieters were told to weigh themselves and keep a food diary and to report their weight, calorie intake, and exercise minutes online. And their goal was to lose 10% of their body weight with a set calorie intake and 200 minutes a week of moderate to vigorous activity. Well, the failure started even before it began. 79% of the people who were given a prescription for this program either didn't even bother to start it or they quit before the end of the first week. Things were not a whole lot better for the people who completed the first week. Only 20% watched all of the video lessons and only 32% submitted all the weeks of weight data. Those who watched the most videos and reported every week lost the most weight and then the authors associated <laughs> that with watching videos and reporting their weight loss. Gosh, that was the reason the people lost weight. 
Well, Friedhoff correctly notes that in this case, the outcomes are abysmal, the participation rates are low, the completion rates are awful. Yeah, here it is, this study published in a medical journal, the results are considered significant and important. I mean, what is significant or important about what I just told you? Friedhoff is right about this. But then he goes in another direction. His proposed solution is equally bad. He says that the continued focus on failed programs is a distraction from drugs that don't work for weight loss. Now, in my opinion, the only thing worse than repeating failed 12-week weight loss programs is drugging people to induce weight loss. I mean, if you look at what's wrong with medicine, failure to address the cause of health issues, including obesity, is one of the reasons why health is getting worse. It's easy to drug people for pain, for high cholesterol, for high blood pressure, for constipation, for high glucose levels, and a whole lot of other things. I mean, let's face it, the office visits are short, don't need much more conversation, and um, repeat business is just about guaranteed. It just, doesn't, it just doesn't work out so well in the long term. Drugs have side effects, underlying conditions progress, and more drugs and more medical interventions are needed. Another Friedhoff conclusion that I take issue with, not only does he advocate drugs, he says, quote, social determinants of health make intentional behavior change in the name of health an unattainable luxury for a huge swath of the population. Really? Writing off intentional behavior change as an unattainable luxury represents even more of what is wrong in medicine. What he's essentially saying is that most obese people can't change their behavior because the failure rate is high for what's offered to them instead of addressing what's wrong with what is offered to them. Behavior is not changed in 12 weeks with automated support or with short-term perfection or with diets that involve extreme and temporary restriction. Behavior is changed when people are ready to change their lives and people do it. They actually can succeed. I think the first step is disclosing to people the risks and benefits of the options they have. You can talk about drugs, side effects, bariatric surgery, worse side effects, remaining obese, increased risk for everything and not a whole lot of fun, or change in the way you live your life and the way the person views the world. Changing habits from smoking to eating is never easy, but it can be done and there are very specific techniques for doing it. I think another thing that I take issue with is this throwing up your hands of, in reference to people who have trouble with weight loss. I mean, can you imagine what, what life, what, the amount of blowback you'd get if when smokers have trouble quitting smoking, we just suggested they should just take drugs or quit or, or continue smoking. You know, we, we tell people, if you try to quit smoking and you can't, or you fall back or whatever, we encourage people to try again. Smoking is a bad habit definitely leads to health issues. So people are encouraged to try again, not to give up. You know, not so with weight loss. I mean, not pushing people, you know, it, it, it really comes down to offering bad options and then blaming people when the bad options don't work. And um, I frankly, I, I've seen this in all parts of medicine in, in the conventional medicine. I've seen it with some of the uh, people promoting plant-based diets. It's, you know, these lazy people just don't want to do something for themselves. Why won't people just do what they're told and do what it takes and all that? Well, at some point in time, you have to stop blaming the people and you have to say, okay, what is it that we're proposing that people do? And what is the difficulty that they're having and how do we get around it? One of the best tools, I'll recommend a book if this is speaking to you and you're saying these are the problems that I have. Um, I went, I read this book and then I actually attended a workshop, a two-day workshop on it to learn more about it. It's called Change Anything. And it is a best practices study of people who've changed everything from eating habits to career ending behaviors to, um, uh, you know, taking school seriously. Um, and they interviewed hundreds and hundreds of people who had successfully made a change and then wrote a book about the common denominators, the six habits of people who change. And so we do know what it takes for people to change. And we should focus on behavior change that works instead of here's a 12-week program, adopt a strict vegan diet, white bread's going to kill you, and a Christmas cookie will send you over the edge. I mean, there's so much nonsense in this field and blaming the people who fail um, themselves instead of the nonsense that's being taught is what we need to do. I think people in healthcare need to become a whole lot more reflective 
uh, looking inside at themselves and what they're talking about instead of always blaming the people they're talking to who can't seem to uh, follow their directions. So I think the first thing to summarize, we need to stop pretending that this isn't hard. It is hard. I know people who've lost weight and kept it off. It was not an easy task particularly since eating is something you do all the time and many of these habits are deeply ingrained. I think the second thing is people have to understand you're not gonna change your weight unless you're willing to change the way you live your life in some important ways, prepare people for that. Um, and then offer assistance in those very specific areas. And that's what some of our Food Ever Medicine licensees are learning how to do, by the way. Help people make meal plans, help them go to the grocery store, learn how to batch cook a week's worth of food and things of that nature. Um, that make it easier for you to do the right thing than the wrong thing, using choice architecture as a means of helping yourself. So I hope that this is helpful. And um, I, like I said, I was inspired to create this video because I thought the article was so interesting, both um, good and bad. I mean, the guy's spot on about diet plans, but his alternatives are awful and his view of humanity is despicable, um, a luxury that people can't afford uh, or can't uh, have uh, uh, behavior change. It just takes your breath away. All right, well, hope that's been helpful as usual. Pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it and I'll be back to you tomorrow with more news.